Hey friends, I uh, just wanted to uh, continue in the Christian uh, calendar here and follow up with what happens uh, immediately following uh, Easter, uh, the, fall, the events of the resurrection. And so um, I chose to preach from uh, Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. So let us hear these words from Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee and to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some they doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and remember I am, going, I am with you always to the end of the age, says the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. That was in the NRSV version, um, by the way. I want to show you this picture. Show it up here. Hopefully the glare isn't too bad. Well, it's, it's my favorite picture that I have. It's in my desk. Uh... It's a beautiful image of the cross, isn't it? The sun that's shining down through the trees uh, with the cross in the background. I th think it's a gorgeous picture. Yesterday uh, was Easter, and it was quite an unconventional celebration of the most important day of Christendom. You know, instead of gathering uh, together in churches, most everyone, with the exception of a few uh, drive-in churches, um, either gathered together in Zooms or online streams. Um, and furthermore, uh, there was probably a lot of people who didn't even participate, who generally would have. Uh, I streamed a sunrise message on Facebook uh, for my church as the sun rose behind me and the birds chirped in the background. It was a it was a beautiful reminder that in the midst of the present darkness of today's world, it is uh, light and it is life um, and it is love that continues to persist no matter what it is that the world throws at us. Um, it was a pertinent reminder that Jesus still rises from the dead and that Jesus' love for us does not fade against the the pressing darkness, uh, no matter how hard it tries to suffocate us. Jesus' work does not stop. It persists, uh, no matter how many obstacles darkness throws in his path. Following Matthew's account of Jesus' resurrection comes a passage that, of course, we refer to as the Great Commission. Uh, he's, you know, contextually, the risen son has appeared to Mary Magdalene, uh, and the other Mary in Matthew's account, and is now in the presence of the disciples, where they saw him and they worshipped him. And it is here that Jesus gives the main task, that it is required of those who follow him. For one, to go, to make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach uh, all that Jesus has commanded of them, uh, of all the things that Jesus has taught them, uh, in his ministry and in his life. Then he says, I will be with you always. There are many ways that one could probably approach this great commission. Uh, I'm sure that many of you have heard uh, many approaches to this. Um, but given my time constraints and uh, trying to think about this image in mind here, I want to think of uh, a way in which I think the Great Commission can be looked at in just a little bit of a different manner. You know, many of us have nearly been in quarantine for about a month now, if not longer. You know, we've watched as cases and deaths increase, not only in the world, but also in the midst of our day, our, our living areas where we have friends and family, where we live, it is greatly impacted uh, our lives. Um, I have a, a friend who is a nurse and was walking through the grocery store yesterday and I saw her and she goes to one of my churches. Um, 
And of course we kept our six foot, you know, social distancing rule in place. Um, but she just cried in front of people that walked by, uh, just cried from, uh, the pain that she is experiencing at the hospital, uh, and how, you know, they do not have enough equipment to, to keep themselves safe. Um, you know, we, we, we are watching as people die alone, uh, as family and friends are not allowed to be close to those who are in their final hours, their final days. Life as we once knew it a few weeks ago seems like a distant memory. Life is different now, it could be different for a long while into the future. Yet these words from Jesus still linger in my mind. Therefore, go and make disciples. Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations. And perhaps this message in the past may have been one that fell on deaf ears due to the quantity of times they heard it. Perhaps now this message has greater meaning. Let's look at this picture again. I love this picture because I like to think of it as, I like to think, I like to think of myself as one of these trees. You see, there's three trees here. I like to think of myself as one of those. And I like to think that uh, all Christians can be these trees here. I want you to observe the branches. Look how they, they bend. Look at how they, they grow in certain ways. They grow and, and, and bend and twist in different ways as they've grown over the years. You know, our, our stages and our journeys and phases and adventures of life mimic the branches all the way down to the smallest twigs. We grow in ways that we do not expect. We grow into areas we didn't expect to grow into. We find ourselves in the midst of people we didn't expect to be, you know, around. All across our journeys, we always are experiencing new people, uh, meeting new people that we didn't expect to meet before. You'll notice uh, on these branches are leaves. Um, they might be kind of hard to see uh, through a computer screen, but I assure you, these are all leaves up here that are coming out of the branches. I want you to imagine to yourself all of the people that you've come across with in your life. And how many more people you will come across in your days to come. Uh, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Perhaps the leaves on these branches uh, are people that you've touched in some way. Fruits of your labor. You've touched them in some fashion. As you reflect on your life, on the people that you've seen, the people you've met, the people that you will still have yet to come across. I'm sure you'll realize there are many areas in which you are currently or have been a part of. You see, a tree never stops growing. These trees, they keep growing. Even in the midst of what we're experiencing today, you know, life continues. We are reminded in this season particularly that life continues. That Jesus Christ still rose on the third day, we, we are reminded that life persists. And therefore, our discipleship must persist. It must continue. The people we touch still are there. We are faced with the challenge of whether or not we are going to continue to grow in our discipleship by following Jesus. Or are we going to grow and adapt to our surroundings so that we can continue to do the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I think that's a question that we have to wrestle with. What does it look like to be a disciple right now? What does it look like to do the ministry of Jesus Christ right now? You see, this passage in conjunction with this picture seems to me to be a real good depiction of what we're striving for. Growing in ways we didn't expect to grow. Bending and twisting to, to reach different areas of people we never thought we would come in contact with. Yet inevitably we do, by doing the 
work of God by sharing the good news and sharing the love of Jesus Christ, all with the symbol of Jesus Christ in our midst. You see, there's beauty to be found in following Jesus Christ. And this is still a time where we can love and cherish our neighbor in the world. So friends, let this Easter season, even though drastically different than any other Easter you probably have experienced, be one that reminds you that we still have roles to play as disciples in Jesus Christ. And it's a journey that's going to take you into places that you've never expected. And that's the beauty of it. Happy Easter, friends. Amen.